My name's Wes Maybe. We're in uh, the Park Studios in Wembley, where I've been recording drums for the new Rock Goddess album. And uh, we're just going to take you through what we've got on the kit. So you get an idea of, you know, different mic techniques, various possibilities, and uh, hope you enjoy. So let's start with the kick. Um, we've got this big old Yamaha here, and I, I kind of, depending on the style of music, I, I'll either go for two mics or three on the kick, because um, this is a, a heavier record. I've gone for three. So let's start with this guy here. This is the AKG D12. Uh, you'll probably know the sort of egg-shaped one with the green with the green ribbon on it, which is the D112. And this is its uh, its parent, basically. It's the original D12. Uh, very old mic, and I, I particularly love it on on kick. There's a bigger version of it, which is the D30, which is sort of you know the John Bonham kick mic. Uh, and, and it has very similar characteristics. Um, I usually have that, you know, by the by the sound hole, not not exactly inside, but sort of, you know, just looking into, just looking into the sound hole. Um, a getting it inside is quite tricky, but I'm using a different mic for the very inside. Um, and also it has to, you know, you have to leave some room because this skin is going to move, you know, so if you're right against it, this is going to touch, touch the mic. Um, we'll supplement that with uh, this crazy thing right here. Uh, a lot of, lot of you drummers will probably, you know, be familiar with the, the sub kick. And this is basically the same thing. It's an old Yamaha NS10 speaker driver and that, I don't know, there's something magical about it. Um, you know, the, the probably the material of the cones, because they don't make these anymore, because they ran out of that material. Um, and, and there's something about the response of that speaker, basically, you know, wired as a microphone rather than a loudspeaker. Um, you know, because every, every, every speaker is, is a diaphragm, so you can use any speaker as a, as a mic. But for some reason, this NS10 really does the job. And um, yeah, so that just generates the sub, you know, that, that's just creating that woo, that wool that you want, that, that big bottom at the, at, at the low end. Supplement that with the D12 and you get some punch from that and you get the low end from that. And it still translates quite punchy. Uh, still, still gives you a nice transient. And then inside, right on the pillow, I've got this guy, uh, the Shaw Beta 91 PZM mic. Um, you probably come across it a lot in, in live situations where they just dump these into the, into the kick. Uh, for me, it's mainly, it's that attack. You know, it's right by the Beta, so you're gonna get that, you know, hammer on the nail kind of thing you know and you know we'll 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 talk about EQ uh, in, in a different episode I'm sure but you know it's that sort of three to five K metal that tick stuff and that really does does very well for that so that's uh, yeah that's that's what I have on on kicks in general I mean you know there's 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 other other mics you don't have to stick to this so you know you can have the the audix stuff is really cool uh, a lot of old schoolers use um, Electro Voice RE20s in the kick. You've got the Shaw, uh, say 52. You know, any 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 of those combinations always works. Uh, obviously, if you have a sort of jazzy kit or a, or a drummer who doesn't have a sound hole in there, then you know you can't put the inside kick. But if you do want attack from the beta you could mic it from the other side you know you could put like a 57 or something on the other side to get that hit that attack from the from the beta on the skin but don't forget to flip the phase on that because it'll be 180 degrees out of phase with these guys so you need to flip that to supplement and uh yeah experiment and have fun with that so what do we have here we've got two mics on the top 
uh, and one at the bottom, which we'll, we'll show you later. Um, in this instance, I've got trusted old Shaw SM57 on the snare. Um, and I supplement that with, with, a, with a small diaphragm condenser mic. Uh, and, and my favorite for that is the Advanced Audio uh, CM1084. Uh, it's cardioid. Uh, it, it's, it's inspired by the Neumann KM84. So, you know, that works as well. Uh, and, and you can experiment, you know, as, as with anything. There are no hard and fast rules for any of this. Uh, so I've got these two. Um, you sort of have to uh, play around a little bit with the position because um, what I use a lot on snares as well is the Sennheiser 441, which is a big old mic with a silver grill on it. Um, and, and you need to sort of figure out where the actual diaphragm is because if these guys aren't lined up, that you're going to have a phase, a phase problem. Um, you know, you can check that quickly when you're recording. Uh, you put the two the two channels up, uh, and if it sounds thin, chances are there's something going on with the phase. So you can either use the phase flip on your on your mic pre or your console, or you know, sort of shift these around a little bit so you can figure out figure out where the phase is. Um, another another good trick to check if you don't have phase meter is is to pan hard left and hard right and if it sounds like really weird because one of them's pushing and the other one's pulling you get this kind of almost motion sickness feeling in your ears you've got a phase problem so just flip it flip it around um other things other things to do as well uh, is is ha have your your main snare top mic there and a cool trick is to, to use similar mic to this sort of overlooking the rim so it's looking that way uh, that 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 can work really well uh, and some people even mic the side just the side of the shell so you get more of that resonance you know I mean this 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 drum it's got that bang so if you want that if you want that really cranky dang dang snare then you, you could mic the shell with that as well um, and then uh, to supplement the top, um, you know, again, it's a matter of taste. I've got the same mic, the SM57, underneath. So it's it's basically right underneath the snare here, sort of looking at the snares. So, you know, if you want that, that rattle from the snare on the bottom, because sometimes the top mics don't pick that up. You get the attack and you get the punch, but then if you want that really old school, dish, you don't get that from the top sometimes. So if you mic it from underneath, you get you can focus on, on, on that rattle. And there's some really cool tricks that you can do with compression and EQ for that as well. Um, and again, phase, because when you hit a snare, the air is moving away from these mics, but the air is being pushed into the other one. So you have to flip the phase. Uh, again, just to make sure that everybody's receiving the same kind of waveform so yeah that's our snare moving on moving on to the the meat and the potatoes the toms uh, in this case we've got uh, two rack toms and the floor tom um, again you know whatever works uh, uh, you know I've, I've, I've used big diaphragm condensers on toms which can really work um, but in this case again you know this this is a rock record so we want punch we want attack we want that transient response um, so I've got the uh, trusted Sennheiser MD 421s uh, on both rack toms and the floor tom um, and usually you know it's, it's kind of point and shoot uh, with toms obviously you know it, you have a drummer who knows how to tune a kit properly you know the mic is gonna pick up what it hears uh, it's not because you know you've you spent seven grand on a mic it's gonna make your rack tom sound amazing if it's tuned badly it's gonna sound badly so um, but these guys are just really good at, at dealing with toms um, 
they're great on guitar amps as well but you know we're talking about drums so we'll stick to drums um i i kind of tend to go kind of looking you know if you look towards where the where the where the stick is going to hit it's that sort of extrapolation point you know cuz they they're usually going to hit somewhere around here and also tom fills are you know they they fireworky so those mics are in danger of being hit <laughs> quite a lot so it's good to keep them out of the way um, so you know I kind of have them looking looking at at that impact point slightly over the edge so you get a bit more resonance as well from from the shell um, and uh, a good thing to remember on these mics is that they have a little switch right at the connector so right here, you'll find, you know, if you Google this, you'll get a real good close up of this. One of them says M and the other one says S. Uh, one stands for music and the other one for speech. So sometimes when you plug these in, you go, ah, oh, they sound really bad. Chances are somebody put them on speech, which is like, you know, a speech focused EQ curve is where music is more flat. So always make sure they're, they're switched to M for music unless you want a particular sound and then you could just play around with it um yeah so i love these on toms again no hard and fast rules you can you can use whatever i've seen i've seen a lot of um agg 414s on toms um floor tom can be a bit you can treat that a bit more as a kick as well so you can do the d12 thing or the re20 um, or the or the Audix D6 D5 kind of job, um, or another classic that's used a lot in the studios is a, a Neumann U47 FET. But again, if you've got very hard hitting players, the large diaphragms, because of their nature, because they are larger, are quite sluggish in responding. So if you've got somebody who could bang the diaphragm is just going to go, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah, all right, I got it. As opposed to a small diaphragm, which is, you know, it's, it's got a, a smaller frequency response, but it just deals with those impacts a lot better. So it's just a question of taste and a question of accommodating the playing style.